everybody. It's me, Carmine Stefano, the Book Man. And now that I have seen the new Deadpool movie, I just want to give you a little bit of an information, a little bit of a detail about the Deadpool movie itself. See, I went with my extremely friend Scott from Suplex Music and his wife, and we all went together to see Deadpool. And the reason is, he has 18 comics in graphic novels. And I played the game, and I've read his comics, the ones that he has, most of them anyway, and read up on Deadpool and everything. So we're real big Deadpool fans, because he is so unorthodox. And things about the comic itself do give you a little bit more fun in terms of reading comics, because he breaks the fourth wall, because of how he interacts with pretty much all the X-Men characters, all of the, some of the characters aren't even in X-Men, even Thanos he interacts with in some form or another, Death he interacts with and everything. So there's so many things that Deadpool does that make comic books more fun to read. So we had to see the movie, you know. Now me, I'm privy to Nolan North being the voiceover of Deadpool, but having Ryan Reynolds, they sounded pretty much the same. So that really didn't bother me at all. I will say this about Deadpool. If you're a stickler for origin stories and stuff, like I am, they changed the origin story just a bit. Weapon X1, that's what he was supposed to be, it was Project X1, after they gave Wolverine the adamantium skeleton. They utilized Wolverine's healing factor in his genetic DNA and gave it to Wade Wilson and when he had cancer and everything like that. And it, they had all of that, like all that stuff where the, the cancer cells in his body sort of exploded on his skin, and he doesn't look in the movie like he does in the trailers. They make him look a lot more like he does in the comic book, which, if you're a fan you're cool with, if you're not ready for it, you might be a little bit disturbed at first, but it's okay, don't worry. He does have the healing factor, although usually if he cuts off a limb or something like that, he'll put it back on, whereas in this one he grows one back, which was kind of interesting. But... Be that as it may, they did all the fourth wall breaking, they did all the obscure references, they did everything that Deadpool does, which, whenever it's Deadpool, the movie is fucking awesome. And whenever it's not really Deadpool, when it's sort of his personal relationship with this prostitute or whatever, it, it, gets, very, it gets very deep and it gets very dark. And it's also very serious. But like I said, when he's in the suit and everything like that, or when Weasel's on screen, or when Blind Al, who I thought should have gotten more airtime, is on screen, it's Deadpool and it's fucking awesome. Or when Colossus, who finally, finally looks like a legitimate badass character, even though he is very moral and everything like that, when he's on the screen, or whoever that, I forgot what her name was, she had some really long ass name, the teenage chick that can explode stuff, whatever. I forgot what they called her, but when, they're ex when the X-Men are on the screen, in fact, he even had a reference to the two different Professor Xavier's in the movies and how the chronology of the X-Men movies makes no fucking sense. He even referenced that. There were so many of these obscure references and fourth wall breaking things. It was just great. At one point, he goes to the, the mansion, the mutant school, and he knocks on the door and the teenage chick opens the door. And he says, you know, for a big house, I only see them two X-Men. What's the matter? The studio couldn't afford more. And by the way, stay for the post credit scene. Stay for it. It's, it's fucking awesome. It's second to when Thanos takes the Infinity Gauntlet in Age of Ultron and says, fine, I'll do it myself. It's second to only that. It's great. So like I said, I mean, it was a lot of fun. We had a great time. Scott really wanted to see the woman that he was with die because that's what Deadpool's about. Deadpool can't have nice things. We can't have nice things. But, so, he wanted to see that. It didn't happen. I didn't want to give anything away for those who haven't seen it. Now, the place was packed. I was surprised. And, of course, before, they had the Captain America trailer and a couple other trailers that really don't fucking mean anything to me. But they had the Captain America trailer, which I've seen a few times. It looks pretty good. I'm looking forward to that. But the movie itself, like I said, when it's Deadpool and he's in a suit and it's fucking Deadpool, it's... It's fucking awesome. If you're a Deadpool fan, it's fucking awesome. When it's not Deadpool, when it's more about his backstory and the woman, and the woman that he's with and everything like that, it kind of veers off that and gets very serious. But it's still pretty good. But like I said, when it's Deadpool, it's fucking awesome. And if you are at all a Deadpool fan, you understand what's going on, you've been watching all the updates on YouTube, or you have one, 
as an account or you're following him on Twitter or whatever, and you're all about what Deadpool is, you definitely have to see this movie if you haven't yet. If, again, you're not really sure what to think about Deadpool or whatever, or you're not a fan of Deadpool and you won't get this movie and you shouldn't see it, if you're convinced into watching it, you won't be disappointed. It is very fun. It is a whole lot of laughs. You're going to enjoy it one way or another. There's a lot of good action and everything like that. So really it comes down to whether or not you can put up with how Deadpool is, what kind of character he has, and exactly how they do movies and anything revolved or involving Deadpool. So I thank you all for watching. I have more for you soon to come. So stay tuned, take care, and have a great day.